Welcome to the webinar dealing with soil contaminants on construction sites. Our guest speaker today is Sonia Shukri, CEO of Interlink Business Management Inc. and Global Biocoal Energy Inc. The webinar is hosted by the Earth Exchange Forum, a nonprofit organization based in Vancouver, Canada, and our goal is to bring awareness to the material waste and diminishing resources in the earth moving sector. And our mission is to enhance communication, facilitate collaboration, and encourage the adoption of a circular economy. Now, today's webinar is sponsored by PhilConnect, the dirt exchange marketplace for the construction and landscaping industry. PhilConnect is on a mission to encourage sustainability by enhancing industry collaboration and reuse of excavated and dredged material. Now, our objective here today is to understand the implications of contaminated soil, how to determine the level of contamination, contaminated soil cleanup options, and best practices to preserve the environment and stay compliant. And at the end, we're going to open it up for some Q&A. And that's why we're super excited to have here with us today, Sonia Shukri. Sonia is an entrepreneurial chief executive with domestic and international experience in strategic planning, business development, corporate finance, and global operations. She has served over 30 years in a multi-industry consortium in different uh, continents and industries, including soil remediation, thermal oxidizer treatment, international banking and companies, and diplomatic corps. Her company focuses today on creating a sustainable biofuel by converting any waste to it fiber from forestry operations, biomass, into biocoal, serving power plants to phase out coal, and also biochar, terra prata, to improve the fertility of the soil. On the call with us today, we also have Mana Arabi, CEO and co-founder of PhilConnect and a civil engineer with over 20 years experience in the North American construction industry, as well as myself, Huayda Carter, and I will be your moderator. Now I'll pass over the presentation to you, Sonia, so please go ahead. Thank you, Huayda, for the introduction and good afternoon to all of you. It is a pleasure to be with you today and with your audience and thank you for the invite. I should say that I'm uh, extremely proud with PhilConnect Mission who are ensuring soil is cleaned up and proper, properly recycled and reused. Soil has been always been an essential element for us uh, next, of course, to water and air. We grow our food in it, we raise our cattle on it, uh, it touch our water table, kids play with it, and that's why we are determined to keep it clean. Uh, what is soil contaminated? contamination? All contaminants in soil, we all know, are main men. Uh, either from industrial, military, or agriculture, we are using certain chemical products that leak into our soil. For example, we have the gas station, they have the, ga the tanks. If the tank is erupted, it leaks into, into the soil, which can reach our groundwater as well. There are many technology in the market today, and it, many other has been developed since I was working with the soil remediation uh, over the years to treat this, this type of contaminant. What are, this is kind of a slide we have put together just to show the type of contaminants and where it comes from or where, how we can identify it. It does not include, of course, nuclear waste because that needs totally different treatment. Each type of this contaminant would require a different type of cleaning up process to clean our soil. Why we should care about our soil? The contaminant, the contaminant uh, shown on the previous slide have serious effect on human. It can be for difficult breathing, it can affect our lung, we could have problem with it, pain irritation, and can conclude even to cancer. Before you get involved in, into side, in any other site that you are going to work on it, you will have to know the history of the site, what is the industry that has been uh, operating on that site, and it's not only that you should reach to next site as well. They may are using a different other technology or different operation that possibly has leaked into that site. So a lot of uh, testing should be conducted to know the history of everyone. Uh, first of all, the first things we normally we conduct once we identified a site or the owner will reach uh, reached up to us. 
we have to send a team of engineer and we are using an independent uh, labs in order to conduct all the proper testing. The testing should take place not only from the surface. It can go, it should go in many deep as you can go, many corner or a different area from the site in order to, to, to determine the PPM. Uh, PPM are a uh, part per million and that's how we identify the, um, uh, the, high, the level of contaminant. This is another uh, slide we put together to show the level of contamination from low to hazardous and how we can treat each one depends on the type of contaminant. Uh, it gives you just a kind of an idea. Once the soil is analyzed, we can figure out the level of contamination and the proper treatment should take place. If you look at the last button of it, this is a tire. Some of the type of the treatment should be identified. We have identified them in order to treat those contaminants. All right, I'm going to go mostly for give you a quick background about many different slides, uh, different technology and what we are using once we are on the site and we know what, what the type of contaminants are. Uh, if we are dealing, for example, with hazardous waste, which I was involved into this type of technology for many, for a couple of decades, actually, uh, most of the time, if it is extremely contaminated, hazardous waste, most of the time it has to be excavated and trucking and sent to the facility for disposal and treatment. And again, it depends on the level of the contaminant and the um, type of contamination. All right, um, here comes Phil Connect with uh, its service that gives us the perfect tool to connect from to. Clean soil is needed for various industry, construction, the six inches uh, soil uh, tipping we use normally into the municipal waste uh, landfill. Fill Connect, you can get it on your uh, mobile very easy. We have fillconnect.com and I encourage everybody to use it. This is one of the technology I was speaking about. It's called soil blending. If the contaminant is not extremely high, so we can mix the soil with clean soil to reduce the level of contaminant and to meet the local guidelines and acceptance of, uh, of the government or Ministry of Environment, or we call in United States the EPE, Environmental Protection Agency. Bioremediation. Bioremediation, it is a type of process to degrade and transform or remove the contaminant from the soil. The process relies on bacteria, fungi, and different other plants to alter the contaminant, the contaminant uh, in the soil. Uh, this organism carry out uh, the normal life function. So you can even use something called, which I put it in the bottom of the slide, biochar, which re as well the soil after treatment or the terra preta. Um, this is a soil, wa soil washing. I do believe uh, next uh, month, uh, uh, Phil Connect is hosting a specialist into soil washing. He can give you more information about it. Um, it is a type of process uh, by dissolving them into wash solution, mostly it's a chemical. And by contracting them into a smaller volume of soil through particular size separation, gravity separation and attributing cr uh, scrambling. Um, that technology has many uh, interesting aspects and it could be uh, probably explained uh, more in detail next month if, uh, if one of the audience are involved in this technology. The capping. Um, this is another technology. It's not technology. So when I dealt with the EPA in the United States, they have a big size of uh, site that sometimes they cannot remove millions of tons. So what they would do, they would do a technology was called capping. They excavate it under, they go under the soil and put a lining and that lining prevent to leaching. But this a type of technology is very costly and it has to be monitored for lifetime 
It includes drainage and it constant testing. Uh, uh, depends how many times they have to do it. Uh, it can uh, even require a relining if the if the uh, if the line if the lining is not uh, it doesn't hold more than 20 years. Uh, all of this in order to prevent leaching in our groundwater. Most of the sites uh, normally they have made it uh, with military sites, to which are enormous quantity of soil are involved. Uh, thermal oxidizer, this is the most recommended uh, treatment for hazardous waste. It, it, it eliminates totally the contaminant. Soil is uh, excavated and shipped to the facility. That's most of the, most the same. The thermal oxidizer, it removes the heavy and hazardous organic waste from soil, the large or sediment, by heating the VOC to high temperature, 1000 degree or above. The oxidization process breaks down the harmful particular into carbon dioxide and water. It has an air pollution control system that decomposes the hazardous waste and all what it comes out of the stack will be H2O. So I would say uh, this is quite expensive as a technology, but uh, if they are specialized only on soil, you can have them technology soil and liquid at the same time. But if they are only in soil, that the price will be very reasonable. Tracking. When we are talking about excavating and shipping to the site, we are using tracking, train, or barges. It depends where the location of the site vis-a-vis -vis the final treatment. We use a line into our tracking or our uh, Rain car in order to prevent them from getting contaminated. Uh, all of this lining, it go, normally it gets sealed after the, the truck is filled, and once it gets to the site, it uh, it goes with the soil into the unit for treatment. So it decomposes with it, and leaving the truck or the barge or train pretty clean. Um, this is a. Uh, Diagram I have put together a while ago is uh, showing uh, the difference between incineration. We have two types of them. We have a low temperature and high temperature incineration. Uh, I put down there some of the contaminants on the baseline, uh, which they are uh, representing by bars. And on the vertical line, you do have, for example, the temperature which temperature which it needs to be treated. So some sites you go to and you find that they don't want to use high temperature, but they insisted to have a low temperature incineration, which it can be used on the site or outside or off site. So they will treat it and then they are realize if you look at the two red lines, that's how the treatment are. If you look at that, you will find the low temperature sometimes does not clean. They may clean some of the low uh, spots, but we never clean up the entire uh, hazardous waste. So they will have to put it several time in order to reprocess it multiple time, or they would have to use the high temperature incineration, what we call it thermal oxidizer, because lots of people doesn't like the word incineration. All right, this is uh, typical, you all, uh, if you are from Vancouver, we all know the familiar with the uh, site. It is owned by the government. Some treatment have been done on that site 30 years ago for multiple hot spots on the site. The site has been left without any development for years to date uh, with low contaminant. I would assume that have been probably evaporated by now. And I think the government are looking today into a type of developing, developing the site. If this site is not cleaned up, or for example, if we take a gas station, a gas station we all know it has a tank and it, the can has to be removed and the soil has to be cleaned because we don't know if it does have any leach in our in, in our soil, yes or no. <coughs> Excuse me. So uh, so they leave it bare 
like this picture and nothing going on onto it and which represent the hazardous because some kids can run into this type of site or I would go to the next slide please or the government would make a community uh, community garden which everybody around the the gas station or that site, they will go and plant their own vegetation and they can enjoy it as much as they could till the cleanup take place and then it will have the next development once the fund is available. I would say I do always highly recommend when you are dealing with any contaminated soil or site, you always have to consult with your local government website or you speak to them directly just in, uh, ask all the necessary questions you need to have an answer for. Always consult with your local professional, uh, which um, before signing any agreement or any contract to get all the information necessary about the site. Because once you get the site on your hand, it will be extremely difficult that you can get out, get out of it. So I would hope that we all will remain safe and make sure that our soil is clean. Thank you so much, Waida, and I uh, can't take any question. Perfect. Thank you so much, uh, Sonia, for uh, walking us through an overview. Uh, I'll please ask um, uh, before uh, we open it up for everyone for the questions, because I'm sure we have uh, some people on the call that are also experts in that area. So each one in their own area of expertise. I wanted to first invite uh, Mana Arabi, because uh, CEO of uh, PhilConnect, to share some of her questions first, and then we'll open it up. Mana, do you want to do you have some questions you'd like to start with? Uh, thank you so much, Sonia. That was very informative. Um, you uh, touched on most of the questions I, I had, but uh, a couple more is um, how do we decide what is the best treatment method for a contaminated site? Um, I know you had a chart that based on the level of contamination, different treatment, but is that the only way or um, there's more into it? Uh, of course, any type of treatment, you will have to have two specific things you have to identify. The type of contaminant in the soil and second, the level of contamination. With these two items, from here you can have a clear idea first which type of treatment is adequate to be applied. Uh, some company choose to use different treatment than it is recommended to them uh, to avoid high cost for cleaning up. Um, definitely it's not going to work. You have to take the word from a professional uh, company, but um, they will lose time and funding spent on trying to clean the site when instead of using an appropriate technology from the beginning. And then um, what if uh, you're a private, um, you know, property uh, developer and you don't have the money to clean up uh, the site? Um, what do you do with that in that situation? Um, most of the time when I dealt with contaminated site, it, it was in United States. Uh, thanks God that Canada is pretty clean. We don't get too, too much hazardous waste in our country. Uh, so what uh, I dealt a lot with uh, EPA, Environmental Protection Agency in United States. So what they will do, they identify all sites if they are contaminated they will ask or they force the owner to clean it up. If they do not clean it up or they don't have the resources to clean it up, which a lot of them don't, uh, the EPA would take the site away from them. They put it on their contaminated list website, which you can get access on it very easy to identify where are all these contaminated lists. Um, a site, I do apologize. Uh, and then they clean it up, they pay for it, and once it's done, it's, it becomes their ownership, of course, and then they will sell it to any development or, industri or different industry to operate on the site. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. Uh, I'm not familiar uh, what the procedure will be in Canada if we are facing something like that. Um, many gas station has closed down. For example, as I see, I lived in downtown core um, and the site has been remain empty. I'm not sure if the government are using the same procedure like United States or they do have different procedures that can be explored more with the Ministry of Environment. Hmm. Yeah, I wonder um, what is the process here. Um, and then uh, can you tell us uh, how you were involved in some of Canada's environmental law changes? Um, in the old time, uh, now we do have something called British Columbia uh, Environmental Industry Association. Uh, in the past, when we incorporated that company uh, with the company I used to work before, it used to be called um, Canadian Environmental Industrial Association. And that a few years ago, they have divided by province. So every province has the same association. They made it uh, personalized to maybe to fit uh, every province as uh, regulation differ from state to state, from province to a province, so they thought that would be most appropriate. But anyway, when we were all as a Canadian one, in the old time, uh, the American uh, used to send all their hazard hazardous waste uh, contaminated soil to Canada. They cross the border. Once it is crossing the border into Canada, they wash their hands off. They have no responsibility, and it's up to us as a Canadian to clean it up for them. Or most of the time, they were sending to go to secure landfill in Ontario. Uh, any secure landfill, we all know, it's uh, have a life lifetime of 20 years maximum. After 20 years, you will have to dig it out to realign it again. And who is going to pay that is going to be us. You cannot go back to this to the American uh, owners. Uh, so we form a group of professional uh, to redraft the environmental law in Ontario to ensure this contaminated soil does not cross the border unless it is coming for a designated cleanup facility. Not to go anymore to a landfilling. Um, so that's what we have decided. We put together that group. We redrafted uh, the terms of the Ministry of Environment. We and and they passed it on. And min the Ministry of Ontario has Im immediately amended their uh, regulation and followed up by Quebec uh, province. And we were able to ensure that no contaminated soil will come to Canada and we taxpayer has to clean it on their behalf. That was actually one of the best things we have done for Canada. Yeah, yeah no, that's, that's good. I, I know I've, uh, I've been on projects that the uh, contaminated soil was um, the other way, has had gone to U.S. Um, but of course, to a designated facility. And as far as Oregon from uh, British Columbia. So um, I guess they don't have the same rules or I guess if it goes to a designated contaminated facilities is OK. It's, it's just um, crazy um, the amount of trucking that some of the um, companies have to pay for uh, to get rid of the contaminated soil because there are only a limited number of um, sites depending on the um, level of uh, contamination that you can go to. So, uh, which is very interesting. I'm, I'm very excited to learn more about um, the, our next speaker next month that is going to talk about washing and reusing all the components of the soil after it's, um, you know, they've cleaned the contaminated, um, which is great because mostly the traditional way as uh, the soil is not useful anymore. Uh, I can add something about that uh, 
the the question of viewers or inquiry under NAFTA agreement between the United States and Canada, there is some soil can go across the border. Uh, we in Canada being extremely clean and we have the highest standard in soil cleanup. We do have all the technology and we have all, all the professional how to do it. It depends. I'm not sure. It's like for garbage. I know that garbage goes across the border, but I don't believe the contaminated soil would go from Canada to United States unless some of the regulation has been changed with the Ministry of Environment. I've been out for quite a while. I've been uh, focused the last 10 years on bioenergy. Mm -hmm. So regulation constantly change. And of course, it depends from a province to a province. Um, so that could be one of the reasons you have heard about it, uh, about some movement. I'm not sure if it was just municipal waste or it was as well um, soil. I think it was soil, um, but I'm not sure why it had to go there. And and it, this was also a while ago. So oh, okay. again, it could have changed. Uh, would you would you remember by any chance how long that would be? Um, I think at least five years ago. Um, five six years ago. Anyway, trucking, I would not trucking. It becomes very costly at the moment. I agree with you, uh, mm -hmm. uh, but it comes to a point sometimes you cannot leave the site contaminated because it represents a huge uh, effect on human and our if it if it leads to our groundwater it would not be the best idea to leave it on the ground so tracking is essential in in all treatment too yeah unless you have a type of there is many type of treatment you can move the technology to the site and you can do the treatment uh, in situ, what we call it. But most of them, they would rather see the soil off the site, they have a clean site, and they can start their operation or their production. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, thank you so much. Um, you. I'm not sure if uh, anybody else has any questions. Do we have any? Questions on the chat? Uh, no, thank you both. Uh, I've just checked the chat and uh, most of the questions has already been covered. So we had a question about the what happens to moving soil between borders that was already covered and how to pick the uh, type of uh, treatment and uh, that was also covered. So I don't see any new questions coming in. Anyone, uh, last chance, anyone has any questions? Uh, Hawaii, I would like to uh, add the one thing that so definitely everybody care about environment have to speak up and show initiative with the government. The government are here to listen to us, to know they cannot be everywhere. We are in the field. We see it. We know what's going on. We can share it with the, with the Ministry of Environment and then they can help us out to go through either across the border or within our province. But uh, anyway, it was, I would like to say thank you, Mana and Huayda, and all the audience for listening to me today. It was truly a pleasure being here. It brought to me all our uh, activity for the last few decades. And uh, have a great uh, evening to all. And I know that some people sometimes they are on the webinar, they are kind of shy to ask questions. So if you do have any other question, please send it to Huayda and she can forward it to me later on and I will be more than happy to address it. Yeah, thank you so much, Sonia. These are great tips uh, and thank you for walking us through the implications of contaminated soil, how to determine the level of contamination uh, and what are the different contamination cleanup options and best practices. And exactly, just like you said, uh, that uh, the government is here to help us. So we'll have to keep an eye on our sites and see our share our lessons learned and pinpoint items that we think could uh, need attention. After all, it's our tax dollars that's being put to use and 
and we do have a say. And on that note, I'd like to invite you again to come and join us next month for as we dive deeper and learn more about soil washing technology. Our guest speaker will be from a global remediation technology company on Vancouver Island, and they're going to walk us through some of the details of what happens to soil when the, it reaches their facilities, how do they wash it, and how does this soil get to be reused? Because after all, our, our, our main goal here is to eliminate waste and also encourage the reuse of material. And uh, once again, I'd like to invite you, if you would like to be a speaker, to make your voice heard. So we would also love to hear your lessons learned, your case studies about how you're dealing with the contaminated soil or what you're doing to eliminate waste and also encourage the reuse of material. Thank you all once again, and we'll see you on the next webinar. Have a great day.